contract the muscles needed to hold the spine in a nice elongated form. So the first part we're going to talk about are the feet because the feet, these are your foundation. So it might seem a little strange to talk about the feet when we want to work on our, on our back or on our spine. But if we look at ourselves, our feet are holding up all the weight above. So how our feet are setting into the floor is going to have an influence on how our knees are, how our hips are, and our pelvis, our low back, and the arch and the lumbar, and all the way up. So first, if you take a look at your feet, you're going to separate your feet about hip width apart and try to make the feet straight. So when I say straight, what does that mean? I would say a straight foot is the center of your ankle through the center of the foot coming to about that second toe. So if you imagine you have two lines on your feet in those two places, that those two lines are parallel. Okay, because we can get into thinking that the inner line of the foot becomes straight and then you can see that my feet are kind of turning out a little bit. Or I could say that the outer line of my feet become parallel, and then you see that I have to turn in a little bit. All right? So what I want to find is somewhere in the middle of those two extremes. So I find those two straight lines, and then toes. So if your toes don't behave the way you want them to behave, you just take your fingers and you put them in place. What you want to try to achieve is that the toes are spread evenly and the big toe is going straight forward. So if that doesn't happen, you just pick up your toe and you see if you can put it there. And you might need to put all the toes in place. I've been working on this for a while, so my toes are just going there quite naturally, but it wasn't always the case. So I used to, put my toes and say, okay, you guys, you need to stay there, and then press them into the floor. Now, from here, imagine you have three points of balance on the feet. Okay, so one point is right under here, under the ball of the big toe, the other point is right under here, the ball of the baby toe, and the other point, the third point, is right in the very center of the heel. So you imagine those three points are into the floor. Your toes are there more for balance, and so if I'm floating a little bit, I can use my toes. But on the actual foot, which is here, then those three points are into the floor. And then from there, you want to feel like your skin is all lifting, all the fleshy part of the foot and the lower leg is lifting up away from the floor. Okay, so and I hope that makes sense. These two points into the floor, center of the heel into the floor, and then the arches and the flesh all lifting away. Okay? And so if you manage to find that, it's really subtle, so I hope it's gonna work for you. So you can try to work on that. It's very, very subtle, so don't worry if it doesn't happen straight away. Okay, so you just, day by day, you bring your imagination to your feet and imagine that you're lifting the flesh up away from the gravity. And so it comes all the way up, all the way into the upper inner thighs, the fronts of the thighs, even the, the sides of the legs, and then you get your hands on your hip bones. So on these two bony parts here, the hip bones, you wanna feel these squeezing towards one another and then lifting up, up towards the ceiling. It's almost, it's again, it's like you're pulling your pelvis away from the floor. This is all lifting up. And so when you get this, you're gonna hopefully find a neutral pelvis. Okay, so I'm gonna show from the side. So, aligning the feet. So sometimes we can be in a position something like that. 
right? So I get more of an arch in the back, and then my groins are pushing back, okay? And so this can add a little bit of crunching into the lower back, okay? So sometimes people are naturally like this and they're walking around like that, and then over time, they feel some kind of aching in the lumbar spine. The other thing that can happen, which I would say the second one is the more common, is that I tuck under, right? My tailbone tucks under and I get more of a flat back. I'm pushing my pelvis forward. So something like this, okay? This comes a lot from sitting a lot, sitting in a chair a lot. So what we're trying to find is something between those two extremes. So between this and this, right? Between those two extremes. So neutral pelvis. Neutral pelvis, what I would say is that if you look at where your pubic bone is and your hip bone, they're on the same level when you're looking down. Okay, so my pubic bone isn't pushing forward and it's not sticking back either. Okay, so I'm holding my hip bones towards one another, I'm lifting them up, and the skin here, right between those two hip bones, is going back and up. Like as if it's gonna reach somewhere in this area of the spine. Okay, so we find that, and again, don't worry if it doesn't come straight away, it can take time. And have a look and see if your two pelvis bones, the two hip bones are on the same level. For instance, for me, I'll tend to have my right hip bone more forward, okay? Because I have some scoliosis in the spine and some torque in the pelvis. So if I want, I can rearrange that, pull on the upper inner thighs and get both my hip bones on the same level. Then you take your hands in these L shapes and you place them on the low back ribs. And from here, I'm maintaining everything we just did, the feet and the hips and the pelvis, and then I'm gonna lengthen up. So it's like I'm trying to make more space in my lumbar spine. So I'm gonna be a little taller, like I'm making more space between each and every vertebrae. So I've got my feet, I've got my hip bones lifted, and I'm lifting up high. So you can already start to feel what this is going to do for your spine, right? It's, you've brought your spine into a neutral curve and you're elongating the spine. And when you really get this, I feel right now that there's more action happening in this area of my body. Okay, so coming back to the front, up. So we find this, feel like your neck is centered so that your head is right on top of the spine. And then you're gonna raise your arms up. Okay, so practicing to feel the weight is evenly distributed between the two feet. So this can train you that when you're waiting for the metro or waiting in a line, that you learn to have the weight even on two feet and your pelvis in neutral, your spine elongated. And then the arms are just for extra work on the arms. And then from here, you can just breathe a couple of breaths, breathing in deeply, exhaling deeply. You can feel the rib cage moving with the inhales and the exhales. Find a relaxed face, a soft face. the arms and now we're going to learn to do this on one foot so we've got a chair here so you bring yourself towards your chair and you can bend your right knee and then lift the foot and place it on your chair okay, so if it's possible you're going to keep the knee straight and then from here I want to rearrange again see if I can stand in a nice straight line so I check my foot feel like my foot is evenly spread on the floor. Those three points are pushing down. The flesh is lifting up. My inner upper thighs are lifting up. And then I want to look at my hips. Don't fall all over. <laughs> so I want to look at my hips and see that they're level. I want to lengthen my ribs up, 
Feel that contraction of the pelvic floor and lower abdominals, and then my leg is straight. So I can stay here, check the neck feels long. I can place the hands and namaste in front of the, the chest. Or if I feel like I'm really steady in my balance, then I can lift my arms up over my head. And then softening the face, softening the gaze, Finding one point to gaze at. This is very helpful for balance. This left side, the buttocks are engaging just, just enough. They're not clenching, but they are engaging. And then staying for some deep breathing. Inhaling. And exhaling. side but I would try to keep the foot flexed or ankle straight so that you don't have torque in the, the ankle. Then re-looking at your lower foot, seeing that it looks straight, balanced evenly, feel like the leg is strong, this buttock is engaging, hip bones towards one another, lower abdominals going back and slightly upwards, hips on the same level, bring the hands on the low ribs, and elongate. And you can keep that knee bent if it feels like it's too much of a strain on the hamstrings. And then either staying here, hands on the hips, hands in namaste, softening the face, or maybe eventually if you feel very stable, lifting up the arms, finding a nice gazing point. Check there's no tension in the jaw. Breathing deeply, inhaling, exhaling. Learning to stabilize your spine with the muscular effort. But once you train your body, it'll stay there without really very much effort. And exhale, release the arms, bending at the knee, and then coming back. So now we're placed our, we've placed ourselves near a wall so that we can do a forward bend with both hands on the wall. So nothing changes. We're still thinking about our foundation. The feet are firm onto the floor. I've got my feet straight. My thighs are lifting up. My hip bones are lifting up. My hip bones are going towards one another. I'm elongating in the lumbar spine. So now, this time you're gonna take your hands on your hips, push the lower abdominals in with your fingers like this. And then, Keeping the lower abdominals in, keeping the elongation in the spine, you're going to start to tilt forward. Feel like you stop around the area where the torso is level with the floor. Place the hands on the wall in front of you. So ideally you're looking for the hands about the same level as the hip bones. If it doesn't happen, it's not the end of the world. So my hands are about the level of my hips and my legs are engaging, making sure that your skin is still lifting away from the floor so the legs are strong, lower abdominals are in, and some of the things you want to avoid. So we want to avoid sinking. Right? You can see here I don't have to do any work, I just hang into my joints. So over the long term this won't be very good for the, the shoulders or the lower back. So instead, I want to feel like I'm connecting my core in and elongating through the spine. So I've got my hands on the wall, ears between the, the upper arms, 
Feel like I'm reaching my head towards the wall, the crown of the head towards the wall, the hip bones back towards the chair. And then if I want, I can take a look at my, my rib cage, this area, and notice if there's some imbalances there. And once you find a stable position, staying there and breathing. some breaths, bend the knees, and push away from the wall, and come up to stand. So now the next one we're going to do is always the same, <laughs> just a little bit different shape. But now we're separating our feet a little bit wider than the hips. So feet are straight, same angle to the center of that second toe feeling like the three points of the feet are pressing down and then all the flesh is reaching away. So I'm also, I'm reaching down and up at the same time. I you know that's a bit subtle. Upper inner thighs reaching up, hip bones coming towards one another and then reaching up and then low back ribs also coming up. Okay? The tops of the buttocks are softening down but not not in a squeezing manner or a tilting manner. It's neutral pelvis. So I'm reaching up and I want my hips on the same level. Crown reaching up. And then I can stay here, hands on the hips, hands in namaste. Or if you want a little bit more challenge, reach your arms to the sides, flexing the hands back and reaching the base of the hands away from you. See if you can engage the arms, especially underneath the arms. And have a soft base. Breathe deeply, feel the rib cage breathing, moving. Check what's happening in the feet. Check that the skin of the arm, sorry, the skin of the neck is softening away from the ears. steady gazing point and enjoy breathing and enjoy feeling the muscles active in the body. And then when you're finished, lowering the hands, coming to the front of your mats, you know, bring the feet hip width apart, re-verifying how the feet are on the floor and lifting the hip bones up, elongating the spine. You're going to bring the hands on the two hip bones, press the fingers into the lower belly, and then start to fold forward, trying to keep the back long, coming all the way down until you can get your hands on the floor. So if you need to, you can bend your knees here, and the hands are hip width apart, and then you're going to step one foot back and the other foot back, and then check your feet are on the same level, and then slowly from here, you're trying to reach your sitting bone to the wall behind you. So if the heels come down, that's great. If they don't, it doesn't matter. Both are, both are perfect. So I'm pressing my hands into the floor, reaching my sitting bones to the back wall, feeling like my ears are between my upper arms. And then I'm just gonna take a quick look at my ribs, and I want both ribs to be the same level. Okay, especially if you have any kind of scoliosis in your spine. So the more I reach back, the more likely my ribs will come into a level position. So looking at the ribs, both sitting bones going back evenly, ribs are level, feeling the back then after you're looking at the ribs, once they're level, bring your ears between the upper and inner arms. Find a gazing point somewhere between the feet. Breathing here. And 
Now, starting to walk the hands towards the feet, bending at the knees, and coming into this squatting position. So if the feet, if the heels don't stay on the floor, it's no problem. The heels can be up a little bit. You might even need to open the feet a little bit out to the sides like this. And you could keep some weight forward, especially if the heels are up and you're feeling a little unbalanced. Then put your weight into your hands because this is to relax the buttocks and the lower back. So if you're struggling too much to hold yourself up there, you might be doing the exact opposite. You might be contracting a lot in this area. So we want to relax. So find the place that you're able to relax in. So the hands can be down, the hands can be also up. And you can close the eyes, see if you can feel inside what's happening around the hip joints, around the buttocks and the lower back, and see if you can soften. So if you feel some contraction happening somewhere, bring your mind there and see if you can relax it. And just breathe in for a couple breaths. And then from here, walking the hands forward again. Walking until you come to your hands and your knees. So you want your hands under the shoulders, the knees approximately under the hips. And from here you're going to inhale, gain some flexibility in the spine by dropping the belly and lifting the chest. Okay, so if you feel any pinching in the lower back or around the sacroiliac joints here, then don't go into that. Okay, so you just go far to the place where there's no pain. So if, for instance, I start to feel pain here, I'm like, oh, no, that's too much. Then what I need to do is feel my pubic bone coming forward this way, up towards my navel, just enough until there's no more pain. Okay, so don't work with the pain. Don't go into the pain. So inhale, arch the back. Exhale, raising the spine up towards the ceiling. We're going to work a few breaths. Inhale, opening the chest, gaze to the nose. Exhale, pulling the navel towards the spine, the spine towards the ceiling. Inhale to open. Exhale, squeezing the belly. Two more, your own breathing rhythm. Inhaling. So now what we're going to try to do is find neutral spine. So this can be a bit challenging. So what we want to feel is the upper thighs pushing back towards the wall behind you, the crown of the head reaching forward to the wall in front of you, and feel like your core area between the hip bones and the low ribs is just slightly engaged, just enough to find a neutral spine. This area feels like it's sliding down away from me. This area, the ribs, is sliding forward in the opposite direction. So finding that neutral. So when you find it, you have that same sensation you had when you were standing on two feet in the Sadastidhi position. That whole same sensation comes in the pelvis area. Once you find neutral, then you're going to stretch your right leg out beyond the toes and press the heel away so that your knee is completely straight without being locked. Then you can place the knee back down and stretch out the other side.
See if you can feel what's happening in the core of the body. Feel the upper inner thigh sliding up into the pelvic floor. Hip bones sliding towards one, any, one another. The buttocks are just engaged enough that they're firming in without clenching. Now, you can release that knee, and we're gonna lift both knees at the same time into a plank pose. So you might need to, I need to slide my feet back a little bit so my shoulders are over my wrists, my heels pushing away, and I feel like I'm doing that standing position in, from my heels all the way to the, towards the crown of my head. Trying to hold for a few breaths. If it starts to sag, it means you need to come out. So if this kind of thing happens, you want to keep firm. There's no use staying here. Okay, this might even injure your back more. So if you can stay here only for one breath, no problem. You stay for one breath and you put your knees down. Okay. Then next position, you're going to press into your toes while pressing the heels away. And you feel like your hands are sliding on the floor this way, even though they're not moving. They're not actually moving. But I feel like I'm pulling my hands towards the back of my mat while my chest goes forward. And then slowly, 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 all the way down to the floor. When I get to the floor, I'm going to bring my arms in front of me, forearms on the floor, and I want to pull my forearms back and slide my chest forward. But sliding forward from the, the low back ribs. So my low back, back ribs are making space in my lumbar spine. Then picking up one foot, Placing the center line of my, my whole leg down onto the floor. Picking up the other center line all the way down to the floor. Pulling the arms and then reaching my toes and my feet in the opposite direction. The upper buttocks are sliding away so that I don't feel any pinching at all in the SI joints or the lumbar spine. You feel that? then you need to walk your hands even further forward. Now, I'm going to place the forehead down to the floor. Bring the hands on either side of you, palms down. Re-tuck the toes under, pressing the heels away. So now you notice the knees are off the floor, the legs are engaged. Everywhere is engaged. The buttocks are engaged. The, low front abdominals are engaged, and my thighs and the hamstrings. Pushing into the hands, and you're going to feel like you're reaching your chest forward and then up. Keep pressing the palms into the floor. And then push the hip bones and the pubic bone into the floor. You feel, again, you feel muscle working, but you don't feel pinching. And then you can lower the forehead, take a little break. So tucking the toes under, pressing the heels away, feeling the buttock skin working towards the heel, the buttocks engaged without clenching, hip bones towards one another, lower abdominals towards the spine and up, palms on the floor, press into the palms, lift the chest, press the heels away. Press the pubic bone down, hip bones down, Feel the neck is long, gaze either at the nose or a point on the floor. And then bring the hands beside the waist, put the knees on the floor, pressing into the hands, 
bringing the buttocks back towards the heels, coming into this puppy position, elongating the fingers forward, feel the spine, making space and releasing. The sitting bones are coming towards the heels and just stretching up the spine. to sit on the sitting bones and coming into a cross-legged position. So, if your knees are sticking up in the air, it's a little better to sit on something. So just put a book or a couple blocks or a bolster under the sitting bones. Otherwise, if you can feel quite comfortable sitting cross-legged, then and the knees are relaxed down onto the floor, then just sit on the floor like this. So, what we're gonna to learn to do is to sit so that the weight is even in the two sitting bones. So, very often when we're sitting on the floor, we might find ourselves, I know I feel it myself doing things like this all the time. You know, and then the head will go forward and lots of weird things happen. So what I, what I usually need to do is drop and feel heavy in the sitting bones. Now, others, they might have this sensation of something like this happening, so that the pelvis is tilting back, right? Something like that. So if either of those are happening, then you need to correct it. If the pelvis is tilting back, usually you need to sit up on some blocks. Okay, if the pelvis is tilting forward, you just need to bring more weight back into your sitting bones. So bring the hands on the two hip bones, squeezing the hip bones towards one another, lower abdominals in and up, low back ribs lifting up, making space in the lumbar spine, still feeling nice and heavy into the sitting bones. And then you're bringing the head so that it feels like it's even on top of the spine. Closing the eyes for a moment. And learn to breathe, breathe deeply. It can happen that if there's tension in the breath, this can bring tension into the lumbar spine. There's some muscles, breathing muscles, the main breathing muscles that the respiratory diaphragm and they're attached to the lumbar spine. So if this becomes tight, it can also make some achy feeling, some discomfort in the lower back. So sometimes just deep breathing will start to release this whole area. Don't hesitate to sit in a chair if that's more comfortable for you. So the spine is elongated. So now we're going to do a little twisting. You're going to bring your right hand to your left knee, left arm reaching out behind you, and then start to still keep the weight even in the two sitting bones, but inhale, lengthen, exhale, twisting a little bit towards your left. Finding a steady gazing point or simply closing the eyes and listening to the breath. And switching sides, left hand to the right knee, right arm reaching out. Rechecking what's happening with the weight distribution in the sitting bones. Finding a gazing point, or just closing the eyes, softening the face. And breathing smoothly and evenly. Coming back to center. Feeling even in 
the sitting bones feel long in the spine, relaxed in the jaw, relaxed in the face. Free, smooth breathing. And bring the hands in front of the chest. And just chant one ohm to finish. Oh. Um. 